I have fallen back in love with handheld gaming this year and it appears to be the perfect timing. The Razer Edge Wi-Fi has got to be the sleekest handheld gaming platform that I have gotten my hands on and I have been having so much fun with this thing. I love it. Not only has this given me a comfortable way to get back into gaming, but it was easy to jump back into that world. Given this device, it runs Android for all of my mobile games, but I was also able to download GeForce Now, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and Steam Link so I can access a bunch of my console or PC games for some more versatility. Now the one I have here runs on Wi-Fi 6E, so you can stream games from your PC or your console. It also has Bluetooth 5.2 built in and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the controller, which is found right here. Plus there are two pretty decent stereo speakers with THX spatial audio. There's one on the bottom there and then one at the top or on the two sides if you're holding this in a landscape mode. There's also a microphone and a five megapixel front facing camera. And while you may think, oh, that thing kind of looks like a phone. Well, it's definitely not. Technically in the settings, it is labeled as a tablet. There is no rear camera on the back of here there is no eSIM or physical SIM slot on any sides, and there are some intriguing vents on the back signifying that this thing is a powerful little beast. Now my version here is the Wi-Fi version, though there is a 5G version available as well. That one hit the market earlier this year. This one came out in January, and I did get my hands-on experience with it at CES at the Razer booth back in January, but I am so grateful grateful to Snapdragon and Qualcomm Technologies for gifting this unit to me via their Snapdragon Insiders program. The Razer Edge Wi-Fi uses the Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform. So of course, I gotta put this thing through all the tests, right? The Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 gaming platform, this is the first device as of January powered with that chipset. It's a hardware chip, an active cooled gaming chipset with a three gigahertz cryo CPU. So you get higher frame rates with all of your Android games and an overall impressive processing experience. Now those vents, they keep it cool using internal fans. And while gaming, you can definitely hear those fans going, but it's pretty minimal in terms of the sound. This one costs $399 for the Wi-Fi version. It sports a very nice 144 Hertz AMOLED display. You can see how bright it is here on the camera. And it comes with this Kishi V2 Pro controller in the box. So again, versatility. You can use this with touchscreen games, or you can attach the Razer Edge Wi-Fi to the Kishi V2 Pro and play with the controller. So this allows for analog triggers. You can get macros programmed. It's got haptics. The Razer Edge Wi-Fi detects the controller when you plug it in, and it will also detect if the game you're playing supports analog controller use over touchscreen. There's also this built-in Nexus app that gives you a dashboard for gaming. So you can do things like remapping buttons on your controller and setting up the virtual controller mode. This this allows you to play touchscreen games with the Kishi V2 Pro. Now I suggest turning on the HyperSense audio haptics for a bit more fun in-game experience. You can turn these up super high or you can leave it at medium or put it down to low. This is not going to be compatible with all of your games. It also mentions that quality varies depending on the game audio, but it can add a bit more of a fun in-game experience. Oh, and while you're here, you might as well check for firmware updates. I did have a firmware update when I took this out of the box, so you might as well check while you're in there. Now, anytime you open games via the Nexus launcher, which is that little circle button on the controller, it will remember those settings and let you use them in the games. Now, I think virtual controller mode is really cool, but it's not going to work for every game, even so, because some games have weird layouts or they have menus that still require you to touch the screen. The controller is detachable, as I had shown you before, but when you attach it, it does connect to the edge via this USB-C port. I was a little bit worried about the audio being muffled when attached because of where those audio speakers are, but when you do attach it, there are a couple of little holes in the controller that feed audio to the front of the device. And plus, it's very, very securely in there. It's very secure and firmly in place. It does not feel loose, and it's a very comfortable experience in the games. It's a pretty lightweight device overall.
overall when compared to other handheld devices for video gaming. And you don't necessarily need to disconnect it to charge it since there is a USB-C port on the bottom of the controller. Now, I was a bit iffy about this screen when I first took it out of the box, given those pretty thick bezels that you can see around the edges, but it's very smooth, it's very fast. It's got this really nice high resolution at 6.8 inch full HD plus 2400 by 1080. That's loads better than some of its closest competition in terms of price. It almost feels like a miniature tablet or a phablet. Remember those back in the day? Because it is kind of, it's a thick boy. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it is. It's a thick boy and it is made out of plastic, but it feels super sturdy and it feels very robustly built. Like they didn't leave any room anywhere when they were building this thing. The 5,000 milliamp per hour battery is a worthy component and it charges at a max of 25 watts when plugged in via its USB-C port on the bottom of the tablet itself. Now, in my experience, the battery draw really varies depending on what you're doing. You can get somewhere around 15 hours a passive battery life if you're not messing with it and doing very much other than like checking email maybe. While gaming though, you're gonna get like seven to eight hours, but that drops a lot if you hop into cloud gaming down by a few hours. Now, if you charge it via the passive USB-C Kishi V2 port found on the bottom of the controller, it does drop the charging speed significantly to around 15 watts. So there are some caveats, even though it's a generous battery size. Also keep in mind, it's running Android. So hitting the power button only turns off the display, not the device itself. So it will still slowly drain battery life even while it's in that standby mode. The storage caps at 128 gigs, but, and you might have noticed this and thought it was a SIM slot. There is a slot for a micro SD card right there. I know, I'm so happy that it's there too. And you can do storage up to two terabytes on a micro SD card in there. So that's a really, really nice addition. The Wi-Fi model is capped at six gigs of RAM, but I didn't notice any issues when it comes to the RAM or the memory. Now, I do find it kind of annoying that there is no fingerprint sensor. And even though there's that five megapixel camera up there, there's no face unlock. So I have to move my hand over to the screen, which is a pretty hefty screen to type in my pin code in order to unlock the device. Now, when you have the controller on here, that gets even more exaggerated. And I got little hands, so that's even more exaggerated for me. But given that it runs Android, I absolutely absolutely recommend setting up a lock with a pin on it so that you've at least got that security because you can run lots of other Android apps on here too, not just games. So that could be a security concern. So I highly recommend setting up a pin. Now this packs in the Qualcomm Adreno 660 GPU and thanks to those internal specs and that very nice display refresh rate, you're going to get some really smooth and beautiful graphics while you're in the game. I had a great experience playing lots of my go-tos. I noticed that the the frame rates did not appear to drop. I did not notice any lag issues. However, it took a while for me to get into the cloud games because I don't pay for any of those passes. It does give you great performance in game and the display is high contrast with deep colors, excellent response times between the controller and the device. The aspect ratio is going to be kind of limiting, especially with games that are built for a more square aspect ratio. So it might look weird for folks who are used to the more traditional games. I did run a couple of benchmarks though on 3D Mark, so these were my findings. You can compare those to other Android devices, but keep in mind again, this is not a phone. So is this for everyone? No, I don't think it is. Some folks will be more than happy to just use their flagship phone for similar power and processing in games, but half the price of a flagship for a device that is specifically targeted and used for mobile or handheld gaming with a great screen and haptics, a fast refresh rate, and you get a controller to boot, that's a good deal, especially if you're accessing games that you have already purchased. If that is the case, I think this is a fun device and I was more impressed with it than I thought I would be. I do wish the battery lasted longer, but I have taken to putting it back on its charger every single night after I've gamed for the day and I've just turned that into one of my processes in the evening. I also wish it had a fingerprint sensor. I feel like that would add some convenience whenever I'm using it with the controller on because it is annoying to go back and forth whenever I'm locking it or whenever I first unlock it to do some games. Now, if you are new here, you can subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can also check out my membership down below or buy me a coffee links to see how you can support this channel and join folks like Charles who just bought me some coffees. Thank you, Charles. Charles also left me a 
note, they said, love the 100K video, keep up the good work. As a cybersecurity professional at a nuclear power plant, what? Love following your channel from Hack5 to your new channel. Uh, Charles, that is a lot of responsibility. I hope you're not watching my show while you're managing security for the nuclear power plant. That sounds like a very stressful job. Um, shout out to you for protecting the nuclear power plants. That's a very important role. <laughs> shout out to our newest channel members as well. That includes Daniel, Kilo, Angela, and Major Angle. Comment down below. Let me know what gaming handheld I should check out next. There's so many on the market. Thank you again so much to my s'mores for subscribing and watching. I'm Shannon Morris, and I'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.